Zero Salem. As always, I'm your host, Pat. So playing in the background is a little band called Dehydrated from Slovakia. Um, this is going to fit well with the rest of this collection update. These are all acquisitions from the past four to six months, I think, that fit in a pretty good category, which is just really obscure death metal, with a few exceptions, from the 1990s. There's one from the early 2000s, and there's one that's not really obscure, but... I felt like I should just throw it in there for whatever reason. If there's one thing I am, it's uh, inconsistent. Um, if you know me, you know my channel. You know I love really weird, obscure death metal stuff. The more and more uh, time goes on, the more and more I want to track down countries that were in cultural vacuums, especially during that decade. I find that there's just something that comes out different in the music than stuff that came out of mainland Europe or the United States or Canada or whatever. But we've covered a lot of different places with this pile here, including the aforementioned. So thought I'd cover that, talk about that. Dehydrated, really, really good stuff here. Um, this is like early brutal death metal. I think Cannibal Corpse left a pretty big imprint on that part of the world relatively early on. Looks like Dehydrated started recording before they played Moscow for the first time which was 93, I think. Maybe they toured over there earlier. I didn't really thoroughly research that. But judging by this Slovakian band and the next band that's coming up, who are from Russia, um, there's a lot of Cannibal Corpse influence going on. Of course, the Chris Barnes years, which to me is great. I love the Chris Barnes stuff. Um, of course, what death metal fan worth their salt doesn't. And uh, it's, a, it's an interesting kind of like uh, arc going through the sound on this. Like I said, there's three releases on here the uh it's kind of chunky and thrashy like the first Campbell corpse record is there's occasionally some haunting melody that uh i feel like the buffalo guys you know they touched upon but a little bit more in this you know kind of how death did early on there's a lot of weird heavy-handed drumming that kind of mazurkowitz style pounding that you can tell is a direct influence um and it's just all altogether pretty pretty great. There's a lot of pathological sort of lyrical stuff going on, but it does not really sound like Carcass at all. And there's not much of a Carcass influence other than lyrically. And if anything's to be evidenced by the gore on the cover, you know, that's pretty pretty consistent thematically throughout. This is a nice little package. This is all DIY. Can't show you the cassette shell because it's in the player, but it's got one of those, um, you know, paper paper stickers with all the song titles and everything. Nice collage there. Really good work that uh, this Atomic uh, Vision Productions does. They put out the Amon stuff, which is a cool... Uh, I believe they were Slovakian as well. They might have been Polish. Uh, cool early proto-death, proto-black thrash band, like a lot of occult themes. Also really worth checking out. I don't have their tape nearby, but this is a cool zine that came with it. So yeah, um, you can get their tapes through a lot of domestic distros, but if you want to order from them directly, they're like an old school internet kind of deal where you go to a blog and you email them. I'll put a link in the description. The last time I saw their stuff out there, it was in a bunch of different distros, including Caligari, Headsplit, all the tape-based ones. Uh, I think Noxious Ruin too. So definitely worth investigating. Great label cool old school feel oh yeah one last thing that i want to mention about this i just think it's kind of funny having a name like dehydrated it seems like a bottom of the barrel kind of death metal name only in terms of extremity i mean obviously dehydration can be bad and can kill you and i'm sure cases of like extreme dehydration are very grisly and very death metal but could it also just be cured by this i know that it's just kind of a lost in translation thing, but it, it reminds me of that Mitch Hedberg joke. Played in a death metal band. People either loved us or they hated us, or they thought we were okay. <laughs> I 
lot of death metal bands have intense names like rigor mortis or mortuary or obituary. We weren't that intense. We just went with injured. I wasn't in a very good death metal band. We were just called injured, you know, <laughs> that whole thing. But regardless, killer release. Then we've got the previously aforementioned Extinction. This is their anthology. This is a dual CD, two CD on metalrace.com. And again, a bunch of demos, enough to fill up two CDs, obviously. So a good deal of uh, material here. We've got the Life Inside the Tomb demo, the Delirium of Self-Destroying demo, the Extinction Self-Titled demo. These are out of order that I'm reading them. Uh, the and, and then finally, this is a mouthful, the Environment uh, Diabolance Syndrome and Vulgar Dances demo. Um, much like Dehydrated, you can hear that early American brutal death metal thing kind of going through. You know, you can taste a little bit of human waste, <laughs> literally and figuratively, and uh, as well as that early eaten back to life kind of thing. But also even earlier than that, like the, particularly the very, very early stuff is very thrash based with this band Extinction. There's a kind of like a, you know how Slaughter from Canada had that really grisly sort of like rough, like crossover thrash thing. That's on this in spades, I'd say. Stuff that's kind of like that really overdriven, like hot amp thrash, you know. Uh, Slaughter's the best example I can think of, but there's a lot of Canadian demo level bands that kind of did that too. Uh, Damnation, Soothsayer's Demo, you know, that kind of thing. Um, again, that kind of Mazurkowitz like pounding drumming seems to be a theme. Some also interesting kind of lost in translation titles. <laughs> But this is a great release. I like everything on this quite a bit. Then we've got Parasite, Fascination of Indifference. This is a Polish band. So we're still in that general region of the world there. Also 90s. Obviously, that's what this whole update's about. This is from 94, the album. And then there's a, a demo packed on this on the end from 92 that I like better than the album, which isn't always the case with me. The album's very good. It seems like they've been listening to their fair share of early Roadrunner death metal, certainly without the Scott Burns production, which some might say is a good thing, but it takes a lot from obituary. You got those whinnying uh, James Murphy kind of guitar things going on, the sort of sludgy Celtic Frost influence rhythms. Although they do blast, they do get a little bit more technical, so I feel like they go into... A little bit more of like a pestilence kind of category here and there, but it's a very competent 90s death metal. Nothing too out, outside of the box or too weird, but good. You know, if you like that stuff, I'd say certainly check this out. The rehearsal on this is killer. This is way more along the lines of Slaughter and Repulsion and Scream Bloody Gore. It's like very punkish death metal, super raw, but man, for a rehearsal, this sounds really, really, really good. I love it. The The rehearsal, I'm, I'm totally sold on way more than the album. The album is awesome, though. So that's that's really good. Then we've got Insepultus. A uh, couple of weeks ago, I talked about this on the Metallurgy roundtable with Marty and Alan. We are talking about stuff we've been listening to lately. Um, Incomprehensible Appearances is the name of it. It's a collection of a few demos. This is another Slovakian band. So heading back over to Slovakia, getting on a little puddle jumper, flying back over. Uh, I wanted to make sure I wasn't inconsistent, totally inconsistent, that is, and I uh, went back and watched what I said about this. I remember I, I compared it to like early amorphous, Karelian Isthmus era amorphous, uh, but recorded on a Tascam. And, uh, you know, this is after I'd spun it once or twice, giving it a little bit more time to sink in. I'd say that's not totally wrong. It's fairly apt during certain moments, but the more professionally recorded second demo considerations certainly falls in line with that a lot more than the first one, uh, the, which is Incomprehensible Appearances, the same name as the CD. The first one is way closer to Abhorrence, and overall it does have its similarities to both, but it also holds a lot of similarities to a lot of Swedish death metal, uh, both ugly and occasionally melodic. I 
think of early, early Edge of Sanity more than anything else. Certainly the vocals feel more kind of finished, like Abhorrence or something like that. But overall, it's really impressive. There's some really great melodic passages. There's some really cool moody synths on both. <coughs> and you can certainly hear even like a little bit of a like a gore grind influence on the first stuff. It's got a really ugly kind of vibe that I didn't really pick up on first couple of spins. But yeah, really, really cool in Sepultus. All right, hot take incoming. Uh, I didn't really enjoy this. I thought this kind of sucked, to be honest. I'm trying to be a little bit more critical these days. Nice, dry, arid critical, though. Not a, not a moist one. Now I can use them in the tags. Nice. Um, but this is the Book of Truth by Ceremonial Oath. I, uh, I don't know. I've been seeing this pop up on Instagram here and there. I think it got reissued on vinyl. Floga did it, I think, and a lot of people are excited for it. I can kind of see why with the songwriting, but and I couldn't quite place it. You know, I I listened to this a little bit. I previewed it, bought it because I thought it sounded pretty decent for maybe slightly above run of the mill melodic Swedish death metal. Um, somebody pointed out online that it does try to do, or maybe not deliberately, but it kind of succeeds in falling between uh, Stockholm and Gothenburg in terms of the sound, which is cool. I like. There's a handful of bands that do that and uh, do it relatively well. I think Early Edge of Sanity is probably the most popular thing I can think of. All that's great, but the thing is with Swedish death metal, whether you're playing the primal type stuff like Early Nihilist and Early Grave, or if you're going for At the Gates or whatever, to pull it off, you have to be tight. With Grind, you can be a little off. With all this primal early death metal stuff can be a bit sloppy. This is, I don't know if they were rushed, if their drummer was hung over. I don't know what the story is. Like the drums keep falling out of time. It seems like they seem like they're going faster than the guitars and they're trying to keep up another moment after that. Um, even the guitars that sound like the, the solos feel a little out of tune. Almost feels like those shreds videos. Remember those? It just seems a little weird and off, and I just, it completely pulls me out of it. I, I can't get into it. I mean, obviously, this band went on to do a lot bigger things. Um, one of those things where you pull them up on the archives, and there's a million other bands. But most notably, it was Hammerfall, the big power metal band that they went on to. And good for them, you know. Um, but I don't, I don't know. A lot of people seem to be propping this up and are excited about it. And I... I don't get it. I don't. I usually don't trash stuff. I think this kind of blows. Um, another thing, that, another one that didn't really do it for me. Another Swedish band, Infest Dead, Satanic Serenades. This is like a complete discography. I think it's a two CD deal. Um, Jesus Satan demo, 1993. Uh, Health <laughs> and Killing Christ. And it, on its surface, it's not bad. You'd think it'd be something I'd be into. You know, it's got a strong satanic American death metal kind of thing going on with very clean production. And therein lies the rub. Uh, it's very similar to Deicide. It's very similar to, like, the more straightforward elements of Vital Remains. Maybe some kind of stuff like the more straightforward elements of Morbid Angel. You know, it's very unholy, insanely tight, but it's, it's so vacuum perfect and overproduced that it feels completely lifeless to me, like almost all of it. Um, particularly the 93 demo, like I was impressed by the the quality of the 93 demo. Uh, Dan Sueno produced it, and I think he helped out playing several instruments on it as well. <laughs> But there's parts on it that almost border on like, like what feel like to me pretty groove metal, Pantera style almost, and it's got that awful like sterile scooped mid kind of guitar sound. I don't, I don't, I don't get this. I don't, I don't dig it. There's a couple songs I don't like that demo at all. Although I'm impressed because it was recorded in '93 and it sounds straight out of like '97 or '98 sound wise. Um, don't care for the demo. This is a couple of full lengths. I kind of spun them. I was cooking 
dinner in the kitchen while I was listening to it. It was okay, but again, like way too sterile for me. Maybe it's just because I'm so knee deep in filth and demo recordings that I'm just completely ruined for stuff like this right now. But yeah, Infest Dead. Also kind of a dumb name. So as a palate cleanser, I'm gonna throw this out here. I own this on vinyl. One of those one of those releases, it's so good, I was like, I'll get it on another format, you know? Uh, this has got the bonus tracks from the demos, which was the reason why I, I snagged it. Carnage, Dark Recollections. So, if you didn't know, and you should if you like death metal, it's a bunch of dudes from Dismember. They were doing Dismember before this, and then they did this band, and then went back to Dismember afterwards, if I'm remembering right, which is touchy at best, me remembering correctly. Uh, Michael Amet was in the lineup, in addition to the dismember guys and then some other dude i tried to look him up and said he was in, entombed but then it just said that he did backing vocals on clandestine i'm like that's not being in entombed internet anyways michael amet on guitar of course went on to be in carcass and arch enemy after that um you know certainly if you like dismember and entombed and any swedish death metal the stockholm stuff the hm2 stuff this is one of the best records of that style hands down i feel like it's a little bit more meandering and weird and overall slightly slower than the early dismember material um it feels a little bit more dungeony and maze-like and decrepit uh the full length that is uh, but it's it's still awesome it just kicks just as much ass and then the demos the, like the day man lost and the other ones they're more of a gore grind band maybe a really really one of the first examples of a band worshiping carcass and uh doing an homage and doing that style a little bit more swedish sounding you know i think that's just the way the cookie crumbles there but all of it is fantastic i just needed that after that bunch of swedish stuff i wasn't really feeling so much and again with the gore <laughs> again with the gore and the hand censoring so we got a couple of severe torture cds here censor it with glare <laughs> Um, yeah, these were cheap on Amazon. I've been in the mood for brutal stuff lately. I am picky. You know, I don't like stuff that's too over the top and too overproduced. But early examples of brutal death metal I, I think are great because I like Cannibal Corpse and Suffocation. This is a early 2000s Dutch band that just worshipped early Cannibal Corpse. We got Misanthropic Carnage and Feasting on Blood. Feasting on Blood is the first one. Misanthropic Carnage is the second. I'd say Feasting on Blood is, is straight up Barnes era Cannibal Corpse Worship. They do an awesome job with it. They manage to kind of mimic those weird riffs, those weird spidery climbing riffs that uh, Cannibal Corpse kind of trademarked and do really, really well. And then I think on Misanthropic Carnage, I, I don't know, I feel like it's kind of a misnomer calling it straight up worship. Uh, of course, that sound is on it in spades. Guy sounds a lot like Chris Barnes and all that kind of stuff, that, those hammering drums. Sure, all that's very CC, but... Uh, I can hear some, like, a little bit more technicality on it. Not that Cannibal Corpse isn't technical, but different kinds of technicality that feel a little bit um, like early Cryptopsy, early Gorguts. You know, there's some kind of Canadian influence creeping over the border into Buffalo, so to speak, for that kind of stuff. So definitely cool. W worth, a, worth a check. Cheap on, on Amazon, too. Like, these were, like, five bucks each. Staying in the Netherlands for another couple of releases, we've got um, Mangled through Ancient Times. This is really, really cool. Um, there's something about about the Netherlands and the Dutch. They just do Doom Death so well. Um, slower brooding death metal. It just seems to be something in the water there, something in the canals, something on the bicycles <laughs> of Holland and the Netherlands. Uh, I do like this because there's other flavors involved. It's not just doing uh like trying to rip off as fix from their home country or trying to straight up do a peaceful thing um those influences are certainly involved but especially early on the first couple of demos cadaverous and um perish there's a lot of uh a lot of like just straight up like violent scary death metal influence they're not really going for mood completely there's a lot of blasting there's some kind of grindy influences going on and then as the demos progress it gets it gets more doomy by the time you get to ancient times it's heavily influenced by paradise lost specifically as i die and shades of god uh, so that 
still growled. Um, that Nick Holmes was still growling. He hasn't. He hadn't gotten to you know Hetfield level kind of vocal style yet, but definitely very articulately phrased growling and very grandiose sort of musical, almost pompous sort of musical progressions. You know, I, I expect to open this up and look at the cover and, and see some sort of Dave McKeon cover art. You know, if you like that sort of stuff, if you like those couple of Paradise Lost releases, they were clearly listening to that a lot. Not the only thing, there's still some nastiness on top of all that, though, and surprisingly it still works. There's some blast beats. Progressing through the later era demos, there's also a lot of uh, cool, moody keys and stuff like that. Very, very interesting band, Mangled from the Netherlands through Ancient Times. The name of the full length collected on here is Ancient Times. So it's all demos on disc one, Ancient Times, and then some other odds and ends. There's an EP called uh, Carnal Abhorrence, and then some pretty decent sounding live tracks. Then you've got Gut Wrench, The Art of Mutilation. This came out on Vic Records. Uh, the prior one, the Mangled CD, also came out on Vic Records. Vic Records is a, I mean, they don't always do stuff that I like, but a lot of the stuff I've unearthed, I've just gone online and searched their discography, what's coming out, what they've released. They really unearth a lot of good stuff. I mean, them in the crypt, you know. Um, anyways, another Dutch band compiling... Uh, two demos with some outtakes and a comp track. Again, very somewhat typical kind of Dutch sound, like but the more brutal end of things. You know, I'm talking about like uh, like uh, sinister, uh, the heavier, faster end to Asfix, gore fest, that kind of stuff. A lot of this also kind of feels Midwestern America to me. Um, you know that that tendency of bands like Phantasm and Mortiscald, who I'll be talking about in a moment, spoiler alert. The tendency of American uh, Midwestern bands to have like a lot of heft and kind of mid-paced uh, power behind it. They do go fast, you know, there's some death metal trappings, tropes of blasting and stuff like that. Very thick, nice, brutal sound, some nice doubled up or tripled up track guitars on this. Really, really good assault on the ears. But yeah, good straightforward, heavy death metal stuff. Gut Wrench, also cool. Reference to Deceased's first seven inch there. Head over to France next. Aggressor Medieval Rights. This is their fourth full length. Um, if you're familiar with their early material, their demos, their first couple of full lengths, super aggressive, violent, relatively raw, death thrash stuff from France. There's something in the water there. I think there was a lot of bands kind of above that ilk in the late 80s, mid to late 80s, early 90s. Uh, Massacre. Uh, mutilated psychodeath lunatics is amazing uh, maybe even early loud blast a little bit although they went more of a technical death metal direction i feel like this is cool they've slowed it down a lot on this one this aggressor record fourth one in the catalog um a lot more like heavier mid-paced kind of chunky not falling into the groove metal trap thankfully a little bit more weighty there's some kind of interesting instrumentals that are very medievally inspired medievally is that a word uh, very medieval inspired instrumentals thrown in there. All in all, very solid. Uh, I did get a little bored towards the end, but good riffs. I'm probably going to keep reaching for the early records though, because they're they're pretty timeless. You got the Summoning of Flesh demo on CD. This is great. This is Quebecois Canadian death metal stuff from the 90s. Clearly, big fans of Gorguts big fans of Cryptopsy even more so. Uh, you can hear it in the bass playing style, very loud sproiny bass. Again, going back to the Metallurgy panel that I was on, it sounds like a gigantic rubber band. <laughs> um, you know, it's very raw recording. Uh, almost hitting like kind of grind frequencies, like you could mistake it for a grindcore band, but I think it's more of the a fidelity thing rather than the style they're playing. I think the style they're playing is very firmly brutal early brutal canadian death metal stuff and there's nothing wrong with that i love that summoning of flesh not sure what this came out on this is one from the early 2000s this is a demo compilation this band morgue necro exhumation this band is from argentina a couple of demos great early 2000s brutal dm slash gore grind kind of stuff Pretty raw, we got some kind of more quiet guitars, but very present bass and vocals, which I kind of enjoy that sometimes. 
uh, organic infest, not to the organic infest level. That's pretty extreme, but a little bit louder in the bass and uh, vocal department than guitar. Um, Disembodied Records put this out. Uh, you know, it's just really competent gore grind slash brutal death metal. You got fuzzy bass, guttural vocals, blast passages, you know, some crawling weird moments, and uh, a lot of like really good samples that I recognize from, I think Bride of Reanimator is one of them and a bunch of other ones. Very like mortician in that regard. Excellent. Dark Creed in the Blackest Eye and Spiritual Blindness. Cool Mexican band, um, pretty unique. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what they're going for, but it does sound like early Paradise Lost in a lot of parts, namely it's self-titled and gothic. It's death metal. You've got, you know, fairly theatric, growled vocals that are pretty understandable. Fits in with that kind of style pretty well, but there's some upbeat sort of like punk and hardcore, at least rhythmically parts, like some simplistic fast riffing that feels a little out of place, but is also pretty cool. Um, and some additional instrumentation that kind of fleshes stuff out. Kind of an overall gothy kind of thing with the death metal. Um, but it's not like a lot of bands I've heard that are just trying to do a early Peaceville kind of thing. It's very much in its own pocket. Supra Altari El Mortem is the name of the label that put it out. So now let's fly back to the good old US of A, to the one of the most ravaged lands of all. I'm talking, of course, of the American Midwest and Great Lakes region. We're going to talk about some death metal. We're going to talk about Hoosier death metal. We're going to talk about Carpetbagger death metal. We're going to talk about Flyover State death metal. We're going to talk about County Fair death metal. We're going to talk about a guy who knows how much Sudafed he can get for a catalytic converter metal. We're going to talk about places that put weird stuff on hot dogs, like watery chili that has no beans in it. How is it chili without beans in it? Death metal. We're going to talk about states that feel like weeks to drive through because they're so flat death metal. We're going to talk about weird teeth death metal. Okay, okay, that's enough. That's enough. I love the Midwest. I'm just fucking around. Carved in Flesh from Ohio. Again, early example of brutal death metal. This is very technical. I feel almost like this could be from Jersey just because of a human remains and ripping corpse and all that stuff. A lot of stop and start on a dime, um, kind of angular, weird riff progressions, that sort of stuff. Mass Psychosis is another one that comes to mind. Really great underrated band from that era that I'm pretty sure was from Jersey. Might need to check that up. They're definitely tri-state at least. But yeah, very odd um, bordering on something getting a little bit more brutal. You could hear, you know, if they were progressing a little bit more, it, it might get more towards uh, maybe that kind of technicality that Suffocation had or something like that. A little bit more aggressive than the aforementioned, but definitely very cool stuff from Ohio. Carved in flesh as seen through tears. Um, this also was on Vic Records. This I've been wanting to hear for a long time. Definitely a, a long-running heard of them, saw them in the relapse catalog back when it was photocopied, seen them on thanks lists, always wanted to check them out. I think going back to when I was like a very horror obsessed little teenage skate rat, um, names like this were really cool to me. If I saw a band called something like this now, I wouldn't care. I think it was lame, but just a band that I've always wanted to hear since I was a kid. I'm talking about, of course, the zombified preachers of gore. This is a compilation of everything they've done, which wasn't much. A couple of demos, uh, a basement tape, some outtakes and a rehearsal. Uh, the Full Regurgitation. Yeah, I can't read that label name. Um, this band is great. I mean, it's not going to take the place of Impetigo. It's not going to take the place of Necrophagia or anything like that or Repulsion. But if you want to scratch that itch with some more really raw, primal, uh, barbaric, early, early American death metal. This is a good place to go. One thing I will warn you about if you're not a, a drum machine person, um, they're pretty easy to get around on the first demo, the self-titled demo. Uh, the God's Vomit demo, the second one, it, it definitely, it sounds very, very present. So if, if you're one of those Goat Lord people, Progress, Goat Lord, Sarcophago, not that those are drum machines, uh, but the really loud fake drum sound. Um, yeah, go right ahead. You know, any of that kind of stuff, fine. But if like Casio sounding drum machines aren't your thing, you might not, might not enjoy that so much. 
Um, but yeah, real vomiting, punkish, zombie obsessed stuff. Really cool. The basement tapes, the Orgy of Blood demo, sounds like hardcore. Like the guy's not singing deathly yet. It's more of a shout. And it's awesome. It's like ripping fast, crossover, mean sounding death metal hardcore stuff, which is really, really cool. Uh, and then they, I don't know if we, who asked for three different versions of a song called Crack Horror, but there we are. Um, yeah, really, really cool Midwest band from Michigan, I want to say, that I've been wanting to hear forever. So I'm glad I, glad I snagged that. Finally, out of that general region, we've got Mortis Gold. Actually, it's pronounced Miliwake, which is Algonquin for the good land. I think one of the most interesting aspects of Milwaukee is the fact that it's the only major American city to have ever elected three socialist mayors. This is their demos compilation, demos live stuff, nascency of the prolific. Hey, look, no AI art there. Nice little pen and ink drawing. Um, you know, I didn't, I mean, obviously, uh, ethically, I don't support the whole AI thing with artists and all that. I didn't think their AI cover looked that bad. I think one of the more, just as offensive, <laughs> um, is the how bad those Pestilence and Deicide covers looked. Just like, so stupid looking. Mortis Gold one just kind of looked like a typical death metal cover. I mean, obviously, the whole ethics of the thing are, are a different story, but man, butt ugly, those other ones. Anyways, this looks great. Very cool. Um, what's cool about these early demos is none of the songs, from what I could see, ended up on the first album, which is really dying truth really really cool that they were so prolific that this is all just demo stuff and it's really well recorded again you know it's got that that meaty um corn fed <laughs> midwestern kind of death metal thing where it's it's not too too fast you know it's not doom death either necessarily um i will say that from what i remember dying remains was never a classic record that i listened to a ton as a kid something that i got more into in my 30s just one of those classic death metal albums that I needed to catch up on. So I don't have it imprinted on me nearly as much as other stuff, but I remember it being mostly kind of a mid-paced affair. I'll have to go go back and revisit it. Um, some stuff on here does get like kind of technical and kind of faster, some blasting. I mean, it maintains that mid-paced thing mostly throughout, but they do impress me with uh, their variation, their, their ability to be kind of diverse in their approach to how they play death metal. It's interesting because I feel like they're playing below their ability and sometimes the opposite can be really cool. Not in the case with Ceremonial Oath, it sounds like, but I think of bands that are kind of punching above their weight and aspiring for something beyond what they're capable of. And that manic kind of stuff that comes out of that is really interesting. With some friends recently who are talking about the early Cataclysm stuff, especially the mystical gate of reincarnation, the Sylvan Hood era is great and it's too bad nobody really thinks of that stuff when they think of Cataclysm now. But uh, that first one, that mystical gate of reincarnation, just sounds so unhinged. It's so awesome. Anyway, tangent. Let's round out the good old U.S. of A. with a couple of uh, domestic bands from the era. This is Entity. E-N-T-E-T-Y. Cadaveric Necrogrind. The band was from L.A., Pretty nice reissue on uh, Extremely Rotten Productions. I also have a CD that includes a live set first, which is kind of baffling to me. It's an odd odd track listing choice, but I digress. This is a great example of early brutal death metal, kind of falling right in between stuff that would come later, very blast-driven, very ahead of its time for in that sense. I feel especially for California bands, it seemed very blasty, you know? Um, and Carcass slightly you can hear where the the tuned up snare was going to turn into ping you know loud snare and got that carcass gurgliness to it really nasty very rough recording two different demos on this the necro grind sessions from 92 and into the desolate from 94 great early example of gross gory grind brutality and then you've got grotesque infection as opposed to infections that are clean and not grotesque. <laughs> this is also on Extremely Rotten Productions. I think CDN put out the CD, which makes sense. This is a Niagara Falls band, kind of all in that big sphere of uh, Buffalo all the way up to Toronto, death metal stuff going on. 
again, really, really early example of really, really gross stuff going on at the time. Um, yeah, a lot of scatological themes on this one. That's always fun. And I feel like sound-wise, this comes right in between, I'd say, where death metal, like really heavy death metal, was getting its heaviest at the time, namely like Mortician, maybe Rotravor, some bands from Finland like Ripakulu, you know, the really, really, really um, bottom-end stuff with uh, with gore grind combine combine the two but it's incredibly primal and rough which i'm all about right now i'm feeling all stuff like that so i'm into it and i believe a few of these guys went on to be an anthropic if i'm not mistaken um cool great release and we only have one more to talk about this is cool horror of horrors this is a maryland band this is a compilation of Several albums plus more. Blood Fang... Man, the glare. There we go. Blood Fangs and Foulness. Uh, cool. I, From what I hear, and maybe I'm just reading into this or overthinking it because I know where they're from, kind of sounds like early Deceased a little bit, like a little bit more straight-up death metal sounding Deceased stuff, like Luck of the Corpse, but I could be wrong. It's got a certain haunting kind of thing to it. It's horror as it says in the title, horror kind of sounding approach, um, kind of ghastly, but also brutal. You could hear, again, early Cannibal Corpse kind of creeping in, early brutal death metal, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a good bunch of, bunch of music. Got Sounds of Eerie and Fangs Breaking the Skin and Blood of the Suspicious. Sounds of Eerie is a little bit more fast-paced. I think they get a little bit more kind of stretching stuff out on on the other ones but yeah this is on thrash corner records who have reissued a lot of good stuff cool band horror of horrors from maryland okay not too bad not too bad and just in time for the tape to end how about that that's about it for now um as you can see behind me there's there's chaos everywhere i've got some stuff i got to sell over here and then behind me directly behind my the part of my hair are all the CDs I've bought in the past six months, which always pile up. And my little tradition is make a bunch of updates about them and then put them in Discogs. Probably next out of that pile, I'm not sure what I'm going to talk about. It might be black metal. It might be specifically South American mm -hmm. black metal. Maybe some punk stuff. There's some stuff from the 2000s and 2000 teens. And I'm like, hey, this might be forgotten about. Maybe we should talk about this. I don't know. I don't know. Just to give you an idea. I'm always thinking. The gears are always turning. The hamster wheel is always spinning up here at Ground Zero Salem. Until next time, this is Pat. Have a good one. Have a good morning, evening, weekend, or weekday. Is the sign-off, is that working for you? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Take care.